Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Nash Photography. And it has been a little bit since we've done an imaging video because, well, the weather hasn't really been all that great. In fact, we've been dealing with a lot of clouds, a lot of rain, and as of yesterday, a tornado, as a matter of fact. Yeah, we've had pretty much like every bad weather situ uh, situation that you can think of between, you know, lots of rain, cloudy skies, has been a very uh, unforgiving spring. And then yesterday we happened to have a very close range tornado. In fact, it uh, was in the field right in front of us. So we were very fortunate that it didn't make a direct impact to at least where I live, but a little bit further in the town, uh, a bit of a different story, unfortunately. And I actually do have some video of the tornado that I'll show with you really quickly here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Something's going on right there. Oh, I see it. Oh my God, I see it. Something really tried. Yeah, some very scary stuff, and luckily um, we're all okay. Just a little bit of some down limbs and whatnot. I mean, uh, further into town, not as lucky, but that's not what this video is about. The, the video today is we're talking about we have some new equipment. We have a new telescope. I want to introduce you to this Newtonian. Yeah, I've now stepped into the world of a Newtonian telescope for imaging. Now, I am not like unfamiliar with dealing with Newtonian telescopes. I've been a uh, avid visual observer for a long time since about the mid 2000s of dealing with some really big, you know, Dobsonian telescopes. So I'm not, you know, out of the league for this, but it does present a little bit more of some challenges because of the very fast focal ratio. So what telescope is this? Well, this is the Skywatcher Quattro 150P, which is a six inch Newtonian telescope with a focal length of about 600. But what's really cool is the speed of this thing. With the uh, coma corrector that was included with this telescope, I'm bringing this down to just below F4. So this is much faster than any of the refractors I have owned since my fastest refractor is my Explorer Scientific 102, which I uh, can get it down to an F5.6, but this is a whole different beast that this is gonna be collecting light so many times faster but this telescope also provides a little bit more challenges too. Now, what I've seen online that people have a, a little bit of some horror stories when it comes to this particular telescope in itself, but I'm always up for the challenge and we can make this into an absolute imaging beast. Like one, um, light leaks are always a big issue when it comes to Newtonian telescopes, especially back behind here in the primary mirror cell. But luckily, with the power of 3D printing and me owning my own 3D printing business, we have the abilities to fix all of these, you know, little technical flaws with telescopes like this by simply making just covers for the back mirror cell so you won't have any issues when it comes to looking at, you know, light coming in from the backside of the telescope. And when we're looking at this, it has some magnets that I have uh, put together in here which is gonna cover all of the collimation screws here in the back. So this is a very simple fix here. I'll we'll just pop that right on there and it's good to go. Now there is some other things that I had to work on as well, especially when it comes to the interior aspect. Now I needed to get the uh, primary mirror out because of the clips that are holding the mirror in the back usually cause some weird flares in your stars when they're exposed. So I went ahead and made a 3D printed mask that will cover right over the top of the primary mirror. And as you can see from the time lapse here of putting it on together and getting the mirror out, like I said, was a big challenge, but we got it and it looks really good. 
So yeah, getting the primary mirror cell out was not an easy chore, especially when you're trying to do it as careful as possible so you don't end up damaging the primary mirror. So that is at least done with the mirror mask around it. So another big problem with a lot of these uh, imaging telescopes in the self, especially more on the budget friendly. And even with my, you know, big uh, Dubsonian telescopes I've owned, they always come with these kinds of secondary assemblies. Now, this here is very flimsy and it doesn't hold collimation very well whatsoever. So these here are junk. I hate when telescope manufacturers make secondary mirrors like this because I mean, look how, much, look how flimsy this is. So we need to fix that, right? Get rid of this junk and we upgraded. So what I did is I 3D printed a very durable secondary mirror holder and it was able to basically bolt right on to the telescope itself. Secondary mirror went in quite easily and now this thing will actually stay in collimation pretty darn well, which is a lot better than those flimsy aluminum things that they always decide to put inside of these telescopes. Now, another modification that I plan on doing with this telescope here whenever it comes in is actually uh, replacing the stock focuser on this. Now, I've got this focuser to kind of work okay, but then again, it's still not the absolute greatest focuser to work with. Now, I'm waiting from uh, AliExpress order to come in through something known as the CYCK brand of a focuser that's supposed to be much, much better. I know Quiv did a video on this focuser here and it looked like it would do the job quite nicely. So in the meantime, whenever that arrives, that will be replaced as well. So still just gonna be using the stock focus right now. And it does okay, it's not the greatest, but I've got it to work at least with the uh, automatic focuser here and this assembly with a smaller camera, since I'm using the monochrome camera that I have for it, so it keeps the weight down a little bit. Now, if I was trying to put my uh, 2600 on here with a two inch filter wheel, we're gonna be talking about a lot more weight and probably some slippage with this. So we're gonna be just working with the monochrome camera for now. Once I get the newer focuser, then I can throw in the 2600 if I wanted to at times. And another little accessory that I added as well was a bit of a handle, but it's kind of working as a dual purpose. Not only has a little bit of like an easy handle, but it's also holding a lot of my cords to kind of keep things a little bit neater as far as for, you know, cable management goes. But it also has a little bit of a uh, screw setup to hold an ASI Air. So it keeps everything all together. The uh, cable's nice and neat, and it's just a little bit easier to carry around. Well, I'm hoping to get at least a little bit of some clear skies tonight, potentially, but we're gonna be doing a little bit of some star tests just to make sure that everything's in tip top shape, that our collimation is good. We don't have any weird internal reflections or misshapen stars. So we're gonna hopefully, you know, wait until nightfall, try a little bit of a star cluster. I already got one picked out, Messier 13, since that is uh, arriving just over the trees now and it is a wonderful globular cluster for this time of year to be imaging and it fits really good in the field of view for that uh, for this telescope in particular so I will see you at nightfall and hopefully we can get some really good results out of this now lucky for me we actually got about an hour of clear skies to actually do some first light test of this and let's go ahead and see what the results are. Now, the first one I'm going to show you is just one single frame on the Luminous channel, a 60 second exposure on Messier 13. And when we're looking at this and from, you know, a wider view here, everything looks pretty good. Right down towards the core, everything looks pretty, you know, round for the most part. But I know the one thing I really want to see is the stars, especially these brighter ones. So zooming in, stars look pretty good. There is a little bit of what seems to be like a secondary flare off towards the uh, top left of this star here. 
which is, uh, hmm, I'm not sure exactly what that's from. That could be, you know, a little bit of light leak coming in from the stock focuser, or it could be from something else. But looking at some of the other stars, um, still look a little bit of like an astigmatism up in this area here. But this is starting to get like more like pixel peeping than anything. It still shows that little bit of a spike coming out of the side here. Uh, looking at the edges. Uh, looks pretty round as far as the stars are concerned. In the top left corner. Bottom right corner looks pretty good too. Uh, some of these smaller star spikes actually look pretty decent. There is another star that's down further below. And when looking at this star, I don't see the weird, you know, uh, spike that's coming out of the one side. It's just maybe part of the focuser is letting in a, just a little bit of some light leak. But we can correct that a little bit later on down the line. But all in all, for just a single 60 second exposure, this looks pretty good. Until we started stacking some of the images. This is from the Luminance channel. This is just 15 minutes of stacked data. And actually looking at the star itself, it kind of compensates pretty well. We are looking at, you know, something that's pretty uniform, not much of a halo going on, which is wonderful news. Uh, and this star here, a little bit of some spike off towards that one top corner. What about our star that is towards the bottom. This one actually looks pretty darn good. In the bottom left corner, there is a little bit of some elongation of the stars here, whether that's just a little bit of like a back focus issue. I have it roughly at about 54 and a half with this OAG setup. So I'm kind of maybe just a little bit off with the uh, back focus for the setup here. Uh, the bottom right corner, we're looking at a little bit of some fanning of the stars too, which again, that could be just a little bit of some back focus uh, problems on my end. But I got about 15 minutes per channel. And when I combined them together and gone through all the processes and stuff like that, that I would normally do for my images. And let me tell you, I have probably one of the best images of M13 I have imaged so far and with a fraction of the time. Look at the nice star color all throughout the center here. We bring out more of these orange stars and looking at the star spikes actually look really good after you know doing a little bit of some post-processing for them. This large star here was able to get rid of that weird uh, spike that was coming out of the top left corner and everything looks flawless and for this only being a total of one hour of data between you know all four of the channels we even picked up some of the galaxies in through here too some of those smaller uh like pgc and ngc galaxies here this is just because of the super fast focal length of uh, bringing it down below f4 with this setup also another like super neat looking uh galaxies for here and there lots of hidden little gems in the background so i'm very excited to really start diving into some bigger projects with this telescope here unfortunately i was only got to do a, a small imaging session here but hopefully within the next couple of days i'll be able to actually do a, another target of mine that i want to do with this kind of focal length and hopefully here in the next couple of days so very excited going forward and you have to let me know too for others who happen to have this same telescope or the 8 inch version if you want me to you know start selling some of these accessories for your uh sky watcher quattro telescopes like the uh secondary mirror holder the cover for the back of the telescope the dew shield and stuff like that. Please let me know down in the comments. I would love to be able to help you out for that. So thank you as always. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for future videos coming up. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.